I know the club, close at three. What's the chances of you rolling with me? Now, I don't know about you, but over yonder, we don't take kindly to no T.I. slander. Now, maybe you're out here like wondering, why did I even click on this? I, what, why are we even bringing T-Pain up at, at this moment in 2021? And that might be because you haven't seen what, what, what happened on Twitter. There's basically a clip circulating around, got a couple million views on it, and it's basically T-Pain in an interview talking about one time when him and Usher were on a plane and something that Usher said to him. He said back in 2013, he went on a plane to go they were everybody was going to the BET awards and Usher had called him to like the back of the plane and wanted to talk with him. And basically Usher had told him T T I was gonna say T.I. T-Pain, you fucked up music. Like you fucked up the music industry for actual good singers to shine through because of the way that you brought autotune to the forefront. And then after that, T-Pain is like, it, it was at this moment that I can go back to where I started, where I put myself into a four year depression. Like literally, did I actually fuck up the music industry? Did I, did I fuck up the ability for talented artists to shine through? And all of this started because Usher, out of nowhere, just decided to tell T-Pain, you fucked up music on the way to the BET Awards on a fucking first class flight. Like, first off, what went through fucking Usher's head when he decided this is the best place to bring this conversation up on our first flight class, first first class flight to the BET Awards? Like, he just decided to, you know what? I think I'm gonna talk to T-Pain and tell him he fucked up music. Like, wh why, why? Why would you do that right then and there? Why would you not take him aside in a private room or, you know, in the middle of an actual conversation? You just decided to have this dude stand up, walk over to you and be like, yo, you fucked music up. I just had to get that off my chest. Go ahead and go back to where you were sitting. What the fuck? Super weird, bro. Like, I can't even wrap my head around how that how that entire like interaction even went about. I am 31, about to be 32, literally in like two days. It's not two days. It's actually four days. And I knew that. So I don't know why I said two. I just lied for no reason right there. But my birthday and, and how old I am puts me like dead center of a prototypical millennial, meaning I was in high school when T-Pain like rose to the forefront and like became the success that he was. And I also got to see Usher's career pan out in the way that it did. So if anybody's primed to talk about this, it's going to be me right here. And Usher, you're probably not watching this but you're not gonna like what I gotta say right now. So let me just start by prefacing. Artists can do whatever the fuck they want. If T-Pain wants to come in and use these fucking, this crazy heavy auto-tune because he's making a stylistic choice to for that, then and he happens to blow up because of that stylistic, artistic, creative choice to use auto-tune not as a crutch, but as an actual sound, as an actual, actual instrument, then fucking by all means do it. And if he blows up in the way that he did, good for T-Pain. He was making music that he enjoyed and he became a fucking star off of it. Watering down T-Pain's entire fucking career just to the use of autotune is so disingenuous, bro. Yes, obviously he was he was the leader and he's the one that put autotune at the forefront like as an instrument, like I said, but the dude is an artist through and through. I don't know how many people have seen the Tiny Desk concert. This motherfucker can sing. It's not like he was using it as a crutch. He's like, bruh, I'm, I, I can sing but I think I want to use this auto tune to create a develop a whole new sound that the world's never heard before. The music doesn't push forward. Art doesn't push forward if it isn't for one person willing to take an artistic leap. That's some that that nobody had ever done before. And T-Pain is that dude. And really, I made this video because it's not even about T-Pain, in my opinion. This video was being made because as I was scrolling through the comments of that video, I didn't really see anybody talk about Usher's side of the story. So let me tell you that Usher just sounds like an envious bitch by saying this to T-Pain. The reason I say that is because Usher, well, his prime time was over. Usher in his prime was the biggest artist in the like one of the biggest R&B acts the world had ever seen. Like like 2000 and like 
three to 2006 time frame, Usher could do no fucking wrong. So I was in high school when, when Usher was at like the tippity top, only halfway up of the mountain that is success in the R&B game. He was, he was at that time one of, if not the biggest artist that R&B had ever seen at a commercial level. And while you're on the top, that feels good and all, but you got to remember that when you're that high up, that fall is a long, fast way down. And I also saw the fall of Usher's career. And I think that that's why I say that it's a bitch move to say what he did. And it, I think it's also the fact that he was bitter and shifting blame for the for the demise of his own career because he couldn't adapt to the new sound of R&B. And I think that's why he, he had this urge to tell T-Pain what he did. T-Pain and the sound that Pain brought is probably the reason why Usher's career started to take a nosedive. And people are gonna say, nah, Usher was still on top of the game all the way back in 2008, 2007. Let me tell you something. Here I Stand, the album by Usher, which came after Confessions, it had Love in This Club, it had Moving Mountains. That's it though. I have that album. And I remember hearing it, I'm like, yeah, this is a good album, but it's nowhere near at the caliber that Confessions was. And that album came out in 08, I believe. And T-Pain was already the star that he was by that point. In 2013, Usher was not even, not even a figment in anybody's mind anymore. Every time you think about Usher, your thought about Usher stops with Confessions. Like, there's no way that you're like, damn, Usher really went on a run after that Confessions album. Nah. Usher didn't do shit after that Confessions album. He toured the album, but he just hadn't been the same. And he was unable to adapt to T-Pain. And that's also the reason why Usher tried to sound like fucking The Weeknd. So not only did T-Pain come in in the mid-2000s, then The Weeknd drops the, the, the trilogy mixtapes, not the trilogy album, but the three mixtapes in a row in 2000 and, what was it, 2011? So hold on, I just realized T-Pain had outdated Usher's old sound. So T-Pain revolutionized the music industry and then The Weeknd comes in a couple years later and then re-revolutionizes it again. So not only not only was Usher trying to catch up to T-Pain's sound, now we had to catch up to fucking The Weeknd. And anybody that comes after The Weeknd, you can say was inspired by The Weeknd, but but whenever you have Usher out here trying to basically mimic The Weeknd's sound, now, now that's more of a copycat than the people that come after and are heavily inspired by The Weeknd. Now we have someone who was on top trying to use a sound that that someone else got on top with and it's not working out at the end of the day this whole video is made basically to say that it was a bitch move by usher to say that to t-pain you literally sent somebody into a depression for four years because your career was falling off because you couldn't adapt to the new sound of r&b and it just happened to be that t-pain was the one that brought that to the forefront so now you're shifting blame not because of your inability to to adapt but you're using you're using the fact that music has evolved as a cop-out and as an excuse for the fact that you're no longer on top. Music is going to evolve regardless. The 80s doesn't sound nothing like the 90s. The 2010s don't sound anything like R&B today. It's up to the artist to evolve with it or fall off. And I think you and I both know which one Usher did. And I think Usher telling T-Pain that he fucked up music, I think that was his way of, of saying to the world and accepting the fact that he will no longer be the success that he was because he can't adapt. He's 0 for 2 with adapting with T-Pain and The Weeknd. Like, R&B has shifted in sound so much, Usher's not even a fig, not even a thought in my mind. If he if he dropped the track right now, I would be surprised. He couldn't bow out gracefully. He decided to take a nosedive and crash because of the lack of adaptation. But that's really all that I gotta say. If y'all guys feel the same, let me know. If you if you do feel like T Pain had ruined music, which he which I don't think he did. If he didn't do it, somebody else was gonna do it, and he he just happened to do it because that's what he loved. But if you have a different take on it, I'd be I'd be more than happy to hear it. But I appreciate everybody's time. Follow me on all the Instagrams, Twitters. Follow me on Twitch, YouTube, all those things. I'm doing more commentary videos. So if you like this, let me know. And that brings us to the end. And like I always say at the end, go out there in the world, love and care for one another and each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.